Hey guys, on this episode, we're talking about the digital space with Dr. Howard Ferran. What role does creativity play in marketing? And Donald Trump for president. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to the 88 Dental Marketing Show. This is the internet's only dental show that's answering marketing's most important questions. Believe that, that's what we do. Guys, this is episode number 32 and I am your host, Joshua Scott. Uh, so many things going on, wanna fill you in on uh, first and foremost. The Dental Town podcast with Dr. Howard Ferran is up. If you scroll down below, you'll see it in the show notes. Uh, it came out just a week or so ago. Uh, good interview. I'm actually going to play part of it for you here on the show. Uh, it's going to be question number one here coming up. But uh, man, it's fall. It's awesome. It's Buckeye season. Uh, so here in Columbus, I mean, guys, I'm from Columbus. So uh, we got to talk about the Buckeyes a little bit, but the whole city is stoked about what's happening there. Uh, haven't played so good lately, but I got a feeling that's going to change. But man, just overall, speeches coming up, a big push to the end of the year, just staying busy, uh, doing a, a co-speech here with Rev Local in a few weeks, a co-speech with some clients coming up, and uh, then also doing a thing for a, the, one of the local study clubs here, uh, just kind of a planning a 2016 budget and marketing strategy event evening for them. So that's coming up, I'm looking forward to it. If you ever need somebody to come and speak for you, and maybe you're a part of a local study club or, or you run a local study club and you want somebody to come in and talk about marketing, hit me up, uh, shoot me an email, uh, hit me up on Facebook, LinkedIn. Would love to come and be a part of that for you. Um, gosh, a few other things. Uh, we're broadcasting live on Periscope over here. What's up, Periscope? Uh, first broadcast. So if you're on it or don't know what it is, look it up, Periscope, and find me at Joshua Scott. Uh, just a live broadcast of today's episode. And then it's October, so some brand new articles are out. Uh, two really great ones this month. Uh, the first, The Language of Healthcare. Uh, it's an article I've, I've literally been working on for the last six months and I've put together some presentations to go with it and I've presented it to staffs and practices, uh, but it's how healthcare tends to speak an entirely different language than human beings and what that means and how we can assess that in our dental practices. And so you're going to be seeing some of that on socials and, and the web, but that link is down below if you'd like to take a look. And then the other article uh, is Monday night football or is, sorry, is college football moving to Monday night? And so that's also the newest article that's out. It's really just a look at, um, you know, this year was the first regular season college game to be broadcast on Monday night. And it was a move after last year's, uh, national championship, which was Monday night and had the all time highest cable ratings ever for a televised event. And so um, it's really just, just a look, it's just predictions on college football, the NFL, and uh, just broadcast television in general. So uh, fun stuff, hope you enjoy that article. Uh, but yeah, man, that's the show. Uh, let's get into some questions. Number one, I'm just gonna play you a clip, short three to four minute clip. At the start of my interview with Dr. Howard Ferran, uh, we sat down a few weeks ago via Skype to chat about marketing for D-Town, Dental Town Podcast. And this was a little bit of the beginning of our interview where we talked about the digital space and search uh, more specifically. So I hope you enjoy it. Again, the link is down below. Catch the full episode sometime. And you know what? Let me know what you think. Uh, I would love to get your feedback. Uh, just overall on the interview, how'd I do? <laughs> what did you like? What did you not like? Uh, but here's that segment. Dentistry has changed a lot. And, and I agree with you. There's a, there's a lot of talk and, and mail has kind of been the go-to uh, in dentistry as far as marketing. Uh, but I think 
we're in that space. I see uh, we have we probably have a half a dozen clients right now doing mail. Uh, but the more and more we go, the more and more I'm getting out of it. Uh, just because uh, uh, your mail campaign, man, I mean, thirty thousand would probably be a low end uh, to get into direct mail. And what you can do with half of that or twenty thousand of that in the digital space is mind blowing right now. And the return and how far it goes is just so much better. Um, we've been getting all of our clients that way. Okay, well, I, I'm I'm 52. I turned 53 Saturday. So okay. for all the, the the weirdest thing about Dentaltown's demographics is there is no demographics. I mean, you got 125,000 general dentists in the United States. We have 202,000 members on Dentaltown. So okay. they're all there. So the uh, the the median uh, uh, dentist, you know, they don't get out of school till they're 25 and they retire at 65. So 45 to 50 is the top of the hill. Yeah. So, so those guys, 45 to 50, all sliding all the way to 65, and you just said the digital space, that flew right over their head. So, yeah. explain, so explain, what's the difference between printing a physical piece of paper and mailing it to someone's mailbox um, versus the digital space? Yeah, I think it's attention. Um, and and you know, I'm, not, I'm not down all the way on direct mail because it's mailboxes and dentistry is still a local business. But it's attention, and, and it's where eyeballs are at. And, and right now, you know, we can, um, you know, I still have people, hey, you know, Josh, what do you think about putting this billboard up? And I'm like, man, people are, they're not looking at billboards. They're, when they're driving, they're, they're looking at their phones. Um, and so it's where eyeballs are at. And right now they're in a digital space, uh, whether that's Facebook, whether that's search, whether that's reviews, whether that's, a, a number of other uh, social programs, platforms. Uh, so you're taking advantage of where eyeballs are at and marketing in those spaces. Okay, say, say, say those things again. You said search, you said... Search, Facebook, reviews, blogs, podcasts. I mean, you know right now you're, you're doing this podcast. You have so much attention on this podcast. I mean, you became like the number one dental podcast uh, almost from the day you, you started it. Uh, but you have eyeballs on this podcast for sure, which is why you're doing it. Okay. okay. You know, I, I think something you just said that's profound that a lot of dentists don't get is that when, when you're, when you're in your fifties and you got out of school, you thought of advertising, you, you thought of making a flyer and yeah. sending it to someone's house, or you might've thought a location, having a good location on a four lane intersection with a big street sign, a monument sign. You yeah. thought of that, but, but, but search is actually advertising. Will, will you talk? Yeah. And, and what he means by that is, um, these moms are, are taking out their iPhone and they're going to uh, Google and they're typing in a uh, dentist and the name of their city or their zip code. T t so uh, talk about search. How Explain how search is marketing. Yeah. And so I think, you know, growing, you know, coming out of the whole yellow page uh, era, I mean, we would go that that was search. I mean, that was uh, that was an analog search. You open up your yellow pages, you're searching for a dentist and you're flipping through. And so, you know, I, we haven't missed it, but I mean, we realized that so that search at Yellow Pages has now transformed online to mostly Google. I mean, I think Google controls about 95% of search, uh, and then you got Yahoo and Bing and, and everybody else there. So, uh, but but that's what it is: is, is you're, you're looking for something online, and so what comes up, what gets presented to you, and probably the, the big thing even that that we may miss just a little bit is the impact of local search. And that's where all those guys are going. I mean, if you're on a phone, uh, like most people, Google is going after how to make local search more and more relevant to you. So it's not just search, but it's local search as well. You got to be thinking about. Our first question is from Annette Brogan. What role does creativity play in marketing? Annette. Thanks for the question. I, I like this question a lot because it, what it sounds like to me a little bit is we're, we're maybe playing the or trying to understand the tension between creativity versus formula, maybe. And, you know, there's, there's definitely a whole realm of marketing out there that's science based and math based and it gets very formulaic. And, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that that are in that space and own it. And they're the same companies that give you all these guarantees, you know, add 15 extra new patients a month, do this and do that. And, and it becomes very formula based. Uh, you're going to get on the phone with them and they're going to go do this, 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 and they're going to walk you through a formula. 
and overall the majority of the time they probably have success with it. But the role of creativity is everything in marketing. I mean, when it comes to, I've said this before on the show, there's, there's marketing, there's delivering the marketing message, right? There's marketing for delivery and, and execution, but then there's marketing the message, right? And so many times we get into the execution or the delivery first. We want to talk about yellow pages and direct mail and what do we do for this and what do we do for that? But we haven't stopped to create the message first. We haven't developed the message. And man, that's where all the creativity is. And so I would encourage you, there's formulas and then there's creativity. The formulas are fine, but they have to have that foundation. They have to be the under layer of that has to be the creativity that's lifting them up. And so, you know, it's everything. It's getting attention. I mean, when it, when you're creative, you're getting attention. Uh, when you're creative, you're doing something different. And so it stands out. And so I think in this day and age, especially in healthcare, uh, doing something that's different, standing out is going to be huge. It's going to make a huge difference. And so for me, it's a marriage of both. You know, it's, it's not, it's not either or it's, and both it, it's, we want the creative and, and I, we want to be highly creative, but yet we want formulas to execute and proven strategies that win. And so that's that's a tension that we're always holding. Uh, those are the people that we hire. Uh, that's how we execute is let's spend the time developing the creative and then let's execute it efficiently. Um, but when you get into talking with people and it becomes all about formulas and all about uh, methodology and do these five steps and you'll get these returns, man, just uh, just be careful. The majority of the time it probably works, but it's at the sacrifice of creativity. It's at the sacrifice of the message. And honestly, when you see those those promises and those guarantees, don't believe the hype. Don't, 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 don't believe the hype. Austin wants to know, what do you think of Donald Trump running for president? Would you vote for him? Hey, Austin. Um, good question. Bringing some uh, politics on the show, which is a little dangerous. Um, you know, here's... Uh, let me give you the good and the bad of this and you're like, good, <laughs> how is there even any good? No, listen, um, what I like, the one thing um, that I like about Donald Trump here uh, is the fact that I think he, he's playing the long-term game with this. This isn't Trump's first entry into a presidential campaign. Uh, in fact, I know he was barely starting to become a serious player last year. And honestly, or not last year, but you know, four years ago, last, what is that cycle campaign, whatever. Um, but he, I think he was, he was even in it the four years before that. So literally like eight years ago, he was messing around with it and just kind of testing the water. So this is like his third time around. Right. So I like that about him. I like that. It's, it's a long-term play. He's developing or he's acquiring momentum, uh, and and marketing and publicity and name recognition and developing his I mean all those things there I mean it's all marketing right so it's a very long term play love that what I don't like uh, and what I think this is all about this is um and I don't know I don't know how this is gonna turn out but what this tells me right now is this is all entertainment and that's that's all this is right so. Right now, in 2015, a little over a year away from elections, what we have now is political entertainment. And that's why Donald Trump is doing so well. Because it's entertaining, because it's getting viewers, because it's getting attention, because he's so different, right? Losing, losing my, losing Periscope again. Um, guys, I apologize. This stand is clearly malfunctioning. Uh, 
So, you know, that, so, I mean, he's different. He's getting attention. He's breaking the mold. I mean, that's one of the things we talk about. The best way to get attention is to break a pattern. So Trump's breaking a pattern there. Um, but it's entertainment right now. And some of that concerns me. So actually some of it doesn't concern me. Some of it's just like, look, we're a year and, and a few months out. It's fine that it's entertainment. Once this thing turns serious, probably after the start of the year and we start getting closer to some of the legit primaries like New Hampshire, uh, I, I, I don't think the American people, I, I think they're gonna wake up and go, oh, that was just entertainment. Now let's get serious about the real candidates. So I honestly think that's what's gonna happen. Uh, however, there's a little bit of concern for me that what if this does just turn into entertainment and it's a race that becomes, uh, um, it, it's, the value is in the entertainment for the race and we end up with a candidate or a president uh, like that. So, you know, th those are my thoughts. And I don't know if politics is going there yet. I think at some point the American people literally wake up because uh, Trump's leading in the polls right now, which is blowing my mind. But I think it's just because people are, are having fun with it. They're laughing. Uh, they're having a good time. Uh, just at his his uh, brashness and outlandishness. Uh, it, it's, it's good entertainment. But I think at some point... People wake up and go, nah, man, no, we were, we were just playing. Uh, let's get serious now. Who, who are the real candidates? So that is that is my prediction. Guys, homework for the show. Question. Uh, assess your marketing plan. How much of it is creative and how much of it is formulaic? Uh, give a percentage to each. 20% creative, 80% formulaic. Uh, just kind of look at it. Do, do the math there. Just do a little little um, uh, mental assessment and see where you stand. Maybe you need to swing a little bit one way or the other. So, guys, that was episode number 32. So much fun having you here. Really appreciate the love, the comments, the participation. Uh, really hope you're getting some value from this. And at the end of the day, this is helping you uh, grow your practice and become better marketers. I'll catch you on episode number 33.